When you think of heavenly objects, you may be thinking about other planets or alien landscapes like you see outside my window here, especially after the Mars Perseverance rover just landed. That may be on your mind. But what if I told you that there's an alien species among us? In fact, an invasive species that's laying eggs on another type of alien or invasive species that has a very heavenly name to it. Thus begins our EcoQuest challenge for the month of March, heavenly objects. Will you join us? That alien invasive species that has been putting these objects or egg masses on some of our treasured native trees is called the spotted lanternfly. The spotted lanternfly is an invasive plant hopper that's native to China and Vietnam and arrived in Pennsylvania in around 2014, but since then has been found to feed on over 70 different plant species in the United States. And while its preferred host is Tree of Heaven, hence the heavenly part of this uh, part of the uh, EcoTwest challenge, it feeds on a wide variety of plants, including some that are really economically important like grapes and hops and apples. It lays eggs on almost any kind of surface, including many different forest, forest products that are shipped between places. It, uh, we found a lot of egg masses on different types of maple and black walnut are its uh, preferred secondary hosts, but a wide variety of other shade trees as well. For this month's challenge, we're pretty much gonna be focusing on looking for these egg masses on Tree of Heaven. Just to give you a little bit of perspective as to where a spotted lanternfly was found, as of last March in 2020, it was found in this wide region of Pennsylvania and parts of western New Jersey and in other parts of the northeastern United States. We found individuals in many counties in New York. Um, you can see these dots or these purple dots here. But as of last March, there was still no population in the environment in New York. Well, since then, it has changed. As of February of 2021, you have found that it has expanded its distribution to northern New Jersey and parts of southern New York, um, including many in our Lower Hudson Prism region. There's a couple of different infestations in our area, also in southwestern Connecticut and also in the Finger Lakes uh, near Ithaca, New York. So we have seen an expansion of its distribution pretty quickly. And that's why your help on this EcoQuest is so critical. Early detection is essential to solving this, um, this, this spotted lanternfly spreading problem. You can see what happens when you, you get an infestation of spotted lanternfly in areas of Pennsylvania. It's all over this tree. These are all adult spotted lanternfly all over this tree here. Here's some spotted lanternfly found on some grapes and in vineyards. So this is a huge economic and environmental pest. It, when it feeds, it leaves behind a sticky honeydew that can form a black sooty mold, which can in, uh, influence photosynthesis on some of our uh, treasured trees and plants as well. So lots of different reasons to be concerned and also why we need your help in early detection. Uh, now is the time to really do it. Spotted lanternfly has a one year life cycle. So the adults start laying their eggs in September, November time. But right now during March and in the winter time is really when we should be looking for these egg masses. And we'll go into some of the identifying characteristics of those egg masses, but finding them right now in March time before they end up hatching in, in, in diff, through these different nymph or different developmental stage where they look almost like a beetle that starts at black and turns into red and then finally adults. So finding these egg masses now before they hatch and begin this part of their life cycle is absolutely critical and that's why we need your help. To go into how to spot the spotted lanternfly egg masses, you can see some of the adults in late fall here laying these egg masses and they almost have like a putty-like appearance to them. You're gonna see in a video that I'll show you in a second that they can they can start out in different colors and, and different uh, kind of shades of this beige color here. Sometimes they can look more cracked in appearance, but essentially think of it like you're spreading a putty with a putty knife on your wall or spackling or something. I just put up a quick graphic 
of a branch of a tree that actually contained a lot of different egg masses that I found last fall in one of these inf infestation areas. And I just wanted to walk through what the egg masses will look like in appearance and about how, um, you know, about how big they are. You can see over here in this video I'm about to show you about the scale of my thumb. So each of the egg masses is about, I'd say about an inch or so in, in width, and then maybe a couple of inches across. So this is an example of an egg mass with this sort of putty covering on it. Um, and underneath that are a whole bunch of different egg masses. Typically, each of the di different egg masses will be contain about 30 to 50 or so uh, particular eggs. So you can see in this video that's playing here, um, that's sort of like that, that putty beige-like appearance to it. You can feel that I'm feeling it with my thumb. And even though it has a sort of a glisteny appearance to it, when I'm touching it in the video here, it feels kind of dry. Um, like if I, you can see that I'm making a bit of an imprint with my thumb there, but really, um, you know, it's not, it doesn't feel wet unless of course it's been raining out. Um, but so even though it has sort of a wet like appearance to it, um, it, it doesn't actually feel that when you touch it. You can see these egg masses here in this part of the video are a little bit cracked, maybe a little bit older. So you'll start to see a little bit of that like cracking appearance, especially if the egg masses are a little bit older. And in this part of the video here, I wanted to point out in exposed eggs. So it almost not all of the eggs that you are going to see are going to have this putty like covering on it. And again, you can see the cracks again in that in that putty like covering. But over here, it's more like the grains of rice that are together. And this is what is called more exposed eggs um, and not having this putty covering over it. So you might see this type of appearance to it where they lay their eggs in rows like this um, and maybe not have that covering on top of it. Um, again, be looking out for various the types of cracks and stuff within the putty. Going further down the branch along the line here, you're looking for some more egg masses. And I'll pause the video here as well. In fact, I'll let it play a little bit longer. But again, you're getting that crack-like appearance to it. And you see how these are more exposed egg masses. And see the little rice grains? That's kind of how I think about it. If you see that there's a little slit within those egg cases, that means that the um, the egg mass or the egg cases have been spent, meaning that the nymphs have already hatched from these egg cases or these, these eggs and are now out in the environment. So this goes to show you that, you know, this, you know, part of these, some of these egg masses that have already released some of the nymphs into the environment versus like the covered ones means that those eggs have not quite hatched yet. Again, just feeling that almost like a dry like uh, appearance to it, the spent egg cases next to it, and just a, an idea for scale kind of zooming in and on those regions there. So continuing down the branch, you'll also see some other different examples, but again, a couple inches in length um, and about an inch or so across the bow. So when you're looking for surfaces that the egg masses might be found on, it's at least got to be an inch thick. Here's another look at two more egg masses on the same branch. So you can see that even though it looks like one big egg mass, there is a bit of a dividing line here. And if you look very closely, you can see those spent egg cases or those spent eggs on top of this covered portion here. So those are just some of the variations that you might see when you're out looking for these things on branches of Tree of Heaven or any other structure in the areas that you'll be out searching. That brings us to the part of the EcoQuest challenge. We're gonna be on the lookout for its primary host, the tree of heaven or the heavenly part of our EcoQuest challenge. And many of our invasive strike force survey volunteers are familiar with some of the key identifying characteristics of tree of heaven in the growing season. You know, these big compounds leaves that smell um, and these winged samaras with these nice colors to them. But it gets a little bit trickier is how do you ID uh, spotted lanternfly's primary host tree of heaven in the winter time. It gets a little bit trickier. So I'm going to show you a field ID video in a second of how to how to look for things like leaf scars and, may, and maybe the bark on tree of heaven to help determine where to really focus our efforts in looking for these spotted lanternfly egg masses. One of the things you can look for in tree of heaven in the winter time is its bark. 
And a lot of people liken the bark of Tree of Heaven, especially a mature Tree of Heaven like this, to the rind of a cantaloupe. And you can feel as my hands feel this surface here, it's got some ridges to it, but it's relatively smooth. It's just like a little bit of a ridge to it, like the outside rind of a cantaloupe. And it even has that coloration to it as well. So the mature trees will have that appearance to it. But I'm also in this region on the edge of a park here um, near the roadway because I wanted to show you what the leaf scars look like of some of the younger Tree of Heaven. And you might see these sticking up uh, on roadside, but one of the ways that I remember it is if we zoom in and it kind of focuses in on my thumb here, that's what the leaf scar of a Tree of Heaven will look like. And one way that I remember that is when you think of Tree of Heaven, Heaven Love, the leaf scars kind of resemble a little heart shape or almost like a little shield shape under it. You can see that the bud of this is just above the main leaf scar here. And remember that huge compound leaf falls off in the fall and leaves behind this scar uh, behind. And it kind of has that heart shape appearance to it. You'll also notice that a lot of the young tree of heaven have lenticels on it, or these little white bumps. So as you can see around me here, as we look at some of the other leaf scars that'll start coming into focus, they kind of a variation of that heart shape and um, you know, kind of have a tannish color to them. Some of them will be almost redder, like a reddish green or like an olive color to them. And so be on the lookout for those bumpy lenticels on some of the um, you know, smaller tree of heaven that are growing beneath it. Here's a look at a really mature tree of heaven. You can see just how tall this can be, multiple stories high. And that's part of the reason why it's got its name tree of heaven because it, because of its fast growth rate, almost straight up towards heaven. You can again, take a look at the cantaloupe rind kind of bark on it. So when it's dry, it does have that sort of like cantaloupe appearance to it, but here's a wetter side of the tree. It might get, it might get a little bit darker and maybe even having some more deeper furrows and kind of this striping appearance to it. But a lot of the mature tree of heaven will have, again, that cantaloupe rind feed, feel to it. And it's not just the young tree of heaven that has the leaf scars and where you wanna look, it's also the branches as well. So where some of the new growth might be happening. So if you take a look at a, the branch of this tree of heaven here, you can still see that heart-shaped leaf scar with the lenticels on it. And you can feel that the branch itself is pretty thick, almost the size of my thumb. And that's also what I'm looking for when I'm looking up into the canopy is sort of these like these thicker, these thicker branches that you might be seeing for those, you know, the hallmark leaf scar. So here's a look at some of those branches there. Um, you know, very thick, knobby, almost like deer antler kind of look to it. If you look at the edges of it, you also might see the remnants of uh, flowers that were growing in the past. They almost look like sort of stringy if you can look all the way up to the canopy. That's another thing that I that I'll look for. In some cases, they also may retain their winter samaras or their seeds that kind of tend to clump together. And sometimes they persist throughout the winter and you may see it. I wanted to also walk over that, you know, sometimes Tree of Heaven has these really odd appearances to it. You can see that this one here, almost like, again, that deer antler look to it um and kind of a, a a little bit of a of a you know uh tanner paler appearance than the one i was just showing you so tree of heaven again kind of grow tends to grow straight up not a lot of branches towards the bottom but if you do see those branches look for the kind of the thicker knobby appearance to it as you can see in the foreground here and um and again those hallmark uh, leaf scars Last but not least, I wanted to point out that you may also see the winged Samaras or its seeds of Tree of Heaven that are still stuck on the tree throughout the winter. They tend to clump together um, in, in this sort of pattern here. And if you look very closely, like if you're if it's low lying and you're able to look at them, they almost look like eyeballs. So kind of that uh, like oblong eyeball look to it with the seed in the middle of it. So that's another thing you could also be looking for in the winter time, but not every tree is going to have that. And just as a quick review, remember when you're looking for SLF egg masses, you might see the covering on it of the putty, or you might see the SLF eggs that are exposed and sometimes even spent. And again, about 30 to 50 eggs per egg mass uh, that, that this sort of like the egg mass cover may be hiding underneath. In terms of search tips, uh, spots to look on trees for, 
you know, they tend to lay their eggs on the underside of elements or under, so whether it's under bark or underside of branches or on the crotches of trees that are facing the ground. So definitely be on the lookout for the underside of things as you're looking up into the tree canopy or, or whatever structure you're looking at. It might be a good idea to bring binoculars and look at some of the newer branches higher in the tree so that you're able to kind of do it, do um, diligence when you find a tree of heaven to look for egg masses all over the tree, even up high in the canopy. So overall, our EcoQuest goals is to get the areas most frequented by visitors and most importantly, where cars are parked for long periods of time, that those, let's get those surveyed first. The thought is that spotted lanternfly aren't really great flyers. So they're probably going from one place, say in a highly infested area to another, maybe by hanging on and hitching rides on transportation. So I would recommend going out to parking areas or disturbed habitats where you might find Tree of Heaven and looking for egg masses in those regions. We are, gonna, we are asking all EcoQuest volunteers to be on the lookout for all sorts of trees and structures that could be scanned for SLF, but definitely a focus on this EcoQuest challenge for Mar March on its primary host, Tree of Heaven. Um, but just as I said before, you know, they could they can lay it on everything. So definitely be on the lookout for things even on like car uh, wheel tires or in grills of uh, vehicles you may be dr uh, driving to in addition to, you know, the plants and the trees that we were talking about today. They can definitely hitchhike, uh, lay eggs on vehicle, watercraft or other types of equipment. In terms of iNaturalist posting instructions, this is the Tree of Heaven page. So anytime that you do come across a Tree of Heaven, make sure to post observations of Tree of Heaven under I, on, on iNaturalist under Tree of Heaven or Alanthus Altissima. And this is what its main page looks like on iNaturalist. In terms of instructions for posting for SLF, I do not want to post pictures, or we do not want to post pictures of SLF egg masses to iNaturalist. We kind of want to go through one step of confirmation before we officially post to a citizen science database. So instead, if you find a suspected egg mass, please send an email of that picture of that alleged egg mass to invasives at nynjtc.org so we can confirm that observation. Also make note of your location in a way that you can remember exactly where you saw that egg mass. So things like the height on the tree, the branch description. Uh, be detailed in, in remembering, because if it is in fact an egg mass that you have found, we have to go back out and confirm it. So do everything you can to kind of record your position and make sure that you can kind of go back to that spot and point it out uh, if we are able to confirm it with photograph evidence. Of course, any questions, email us at invasives at nynjtc.org. Visit our Lower Hudson Prism EcoQuest website, which you can see in front of you here. And of course, subscribe to our Lower Hudson Prism YouTube channel to learn about more invasive species and upcoming EcoQuest challenges or to look back at some of the previous ones. Thank you again to our partners and we hope to have you as part of this month's Heavenly Objects EcoQuest Challenge.